Hello everyone, Stakuya here, and welcome back to the History of Everything podcast. Today's video is brought to you by the question that is asked by viewer Budget Arcade, who asked, I need to know more about the personal Italian one-man tanks. Which, yes, that was a thing. Oh boy, was that a thing. Now, for anyone who's a little bit confused on what I'm talking about here, I want you to know that the period in between World War I and World War II, known as the interwar period, was an amazing time for technological developments, especially in the area of mechanization. You see, mechanized warfare as tanks were introduced towards the end of World War I and primarily were being used by the British as well as the French, though the Germans did try to get their hands in there. And these vehicles were specifically designed in order to be able to break the stalemate of the Western Front. Because although there were vehicles that incorporated certain aspects of tanks, such as armor, firepower, tracks, etc., it was really the alarming casualties that we saw in World War I that led to the development of these armored vehicles in the first place. And with the quote-unquote success of these tanks being used by the British and French, other powers around the world were soon trying to follow suit and develop their own. Of course, that being with varying degrees of success. And unfortunately for Italy, those degrees of success were... Rather low. But perhaps one of the most interesting tank designs to ever come out of Italian workshops was the smallest tank in history. Everyone I give you, the Motometra Glietrice Blindata di Assalto, or MIAS. Now this was a vehicle that was developed out of the absolute terrible conditions that Italy was facing in the Alps in World War I. The idea of this was that instead of having your infantry advance unprotected, they would instead have a kind of armored shield that would be able to move with them, something that would be able to protect them from withering machine gun fire. And that's really what the Mias was. It was a self-propelled, mobile shield. Despite the fact that the Mias had some of the features that we would see in a tank, this was most certainly not an actual tank. It may have been armored, it may have been powered with an engine, it may have been tracked, but really, those are the only things that it had in common with the tank. Besides that, really not anything. After all, the entire thing was guided by a single crew member who did not even have a seat. Instead, what would happen is the vehicle would act as a kind of mobile shield, which would allow an individual soldier to move up into an exposed position with at least some degree of safety. Once they had moved into this position, they would then be able to potentially take out an enemy position with the weapons on board the vehicle. For you see, there were actually two models of this vehicle. You had the Mias, and you had the Moras. And in this case, the only difference between the two was what weapons they were equipped with. You see, the Mias version was fit with two Isotta Frascini 6.5mm caliber machine guns and around a thousand rounds of ammunition. The Morass version, on the other hand, did not have machine guns and instead replaced them with the 45mm Brixia mortar. It carried up to 50 half-kilo grenades, making it, in principle, something that should be useful for taking out enemy machine gun positions. Now, you see, I say in principle because, in reality, these things were basically useless. You see, both vehicles were powered by a single 250c Frera engine with around 5 horsepower. Which, if you think about it, is rather weak, even for a vehicle so small. And by having such a weak engine, this meant that these vehicles were only capable of reaching around 5 kilometers an hour when they were moving forward, and when they were reversing, around 2.2. And honestly, one of the greatest ironic things about this entire thing is that the company that made them, Frera, well, they were actually a motorcycle racing company. But their business wasn't actually very successful, and by the mid-1930s, the whole company went bankrupt. Which, gee, I wonder why. I guess because they couldn't get their vehicles to actually go faster. They were specifically designed in order to be able to protect themselves from a Mauser service rifle that was firing SMK ammunition. The Mauser SMK round was something that was capable of penetrating up to 14 millimeters of armor, or around half an inch. And this was something that saw extensive use back during the First World War in order to be able to penetrate those initial first tanks. But that's the thing, it might have been able to protect itself against World War I era weapons, but anti-tank weapons did not stop developing during this time. When this idea was still on paper back in the 1920s and 1930s, it was horribly outdated even then. The reality is, a mobile shield, no matter how well armed it actually was, just really wasn't useful in modern warfare. There was no way for it to actually fill the gap that Italy had with tanks during World War II. Neither the Mias nor the Moras ever actually made it past the prototype stage. As far as we are aware, not a single order was ever actually placed for it, and in the end, it just remains a little bit of an oddity that's kind of fun to look at. 
But everyone, this has been Stakuyi with the History of Everything podcast. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to put your comments down below in order to let us know what it is that we should cover next. Also, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, do anything you can to support this channel and help with the algorithm. I appreciate all of you, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.